In a couple of previous videos, we've begun to dive deeper into what key characteristics can improve a pitcher's arsenal, specifically with the fastball and curveball. We've done this through the lens of utilizing today's latest pitch design technology, and today's video is going to be no different. We'll be taking a look at the slider, a pitch that's usage has nearly doubled in the last two decades. Why is that? And how can I maximize the output of this pitch? All that and more if you stick around to the end of today's video. Before we jump into it, welcome back to another video guys. If you're new here and you're a coach, player, or trainer interested in learning more about the practical applications of data-driven baseball, you've come to the right place. Join the movement now by clicking the subscribe button down below for more weekly baseball animations. We're going to start today's video the same way that we've done our last two breakdowns. But as you will see, these key characteristics of the slider don't fully describe what factors do make this pitch effective. To begin with, the average velocity of a slider in 2019 was 85 miles per hour. In a previous video, we noted that sliders typically fall around 8 to 10 miles per hour slower than the fastball. This range grows a little bit to include variants of the slider like the slurve and the cutter. The average spin rate on a slider was just around the mark of the curveball, at about 2,450. And the range for Bauer units is exactly the same of that as a curveball. And as we noted on the previous screen, the usage percentage of this pitch is at 18% and climbing. The popularity of this pitch has steadily increased for at least the last five years, making it now one of the game's most popular pitches, accounting for one in every five pitches. Now to our three key points of pitch design with the slider, the factors that make or break this pitch. We will start with spin efficiency, which is most prevalent in the slider compared to other pitches. Move on to pitch movement and finish off with effective velocities for this pitch. Typically at this point, we would jump into the different movement profiles of this pitch. But before we can do that, we have to take a step back and revisit the idea of gyro spin. To properly illustrate this, we will begin by picturing a typical fastball from the top down. This allows us to utilize our tilt clock, which is great. However, this is a two-dimensional approach to pitch design. This is where gyro spin comes in. On a pitch that has zero gyro spin or 100% spin efficiency like this one, you would get numbers like this. But if we take this idea and put it into a real world three-dimensional context, you can see how these numbers begin to change. I won't dive too deep into what all of this means in this video, but if you're having trouble understanding this idea, check out my video on gyroscopic spin in the description down below. To picture this concept, imagine a pitch going away from you right after the pitcher releases it. The pitch is spinning around like an open-faced laundry machine or a football spiraling away from you. This is especially important to understand in sliders, and why for years you could hear players and coaches identifying pitches as sliders because of the red dot that appears as it spins towards the plate. That's because the red dot is the point that the pitch is spinning around. Alright, now with that out of the way, we can begin to talk movement profiles. These examples, as always, are for right-handed pitchers, but can be flopped for lefties. To do this, we will plot our favorite chart, the horizontal and vertical break chart. And to help provide a visual for these complex spin axes, we will take a look at the pitch's characteristics from the pitcher's view and also from the side, traveling from right to left. To start out, we will plot the normal sweeping slider. This is a pitch with close to zero positive or negative vertical break and a decent amount of negative horizontal break. From both the pitcher's perspective and the side view, you can see that this pitch has a more straight up spin axis, spinning around a point on both the top and bottom of the ball. This tilt would be around 9 o'clock and it is truly pretty rare to see this type of spin from any overhand throwing athlete. When you think of a sweeping slider, think purely side spin. Next we will move on to the cutter. This is a pitch that normally travels with a positive vertical break and some amount of negative horizontal break. This pitch acts as a hybrid between the slider and a true 12 o'clock fastball. It is normally thrown harder than a sweeping slider. When looking at the spin of this pitch, the axis of this pitch from behind will be tilted to the side, giving us backspin, like a fastball, with a slight tilt upwards from the side view, giving us the horizontal break of our typical slider. To recap, this pitch will have some side spin and some backspin. Now onto the slurve. As I talked about in the curveball video, slurves are one of the least effective pitch movement profiles, especially if you throw both a curveball and a slider. However, we'll still touch on the characteristics of this pitch in this video. This pitch is going to travel with negative vertical and horizontal break, falling into this area on our movement chart. The only difference from the cutter in terms of our spin characteristics is the axis 
out of the hand will now flip, meaning the athlete is now getting more over the top of this pitch rather than straight through it, making this pitch move more like a curveball, hence the name. This pitch has a combination of side spin and top spin. Lastly is something that is becoming more and more common, our gyro ball. It is a pitch that has close to 0% spin efficiency, making it right around the origin point of our chart. Its spin characteristics are unique from the rest of the pitch spins, like we said on the last clip, around a central point on the ball like a bullet shot out of a gun. Hopefully this bottom portion helped you gain a better idea of the different movement profiles for sliders. However, if you have any questions, that's probably because I'm trying to describe a pretty complex 3D idea on a two-dimensional screen. So, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. If you have a good grasp on our different pitch classifications and our different pitch movement profiles, you'll be just as fine as we move on. You may have noticed that we strayed away from the tilt clock idea as we went through the different movement profiles, but that is for a reason. As you take a look, you may notice that there is a significantly large range for each of these pitches. Red is going to be your sweeping slider, orange is your cutter, and yellow is your slurve. Then if you begin to throw gyrospin into the mix, it can fall anywhere along this mark, making tilt a very bad indicator for the type of pitch qualities you're looking for. We talked a lot before about spin efficiencies, and while this can be a complex subject, especially with all of the different kinds of sliders, here are some general ranges for different pitch types that I've found to be successful. Your sweeping slider sits between 20 and 40%. Cutters are going to be a bit higher at 40 to 60%. Your slurve is the highest at 60 to 80%, and the gyro spin slider is the lowest between 0 and 20%. So how does this fit into a pitcher's arsenal? Well, we've said this in the past two videos on individual pitches, but this one rings more true than the rest. It really depends on what that pitcher throws. A fastball with more arm side run, say from a 3-4 slot, may have more success throwing a sweeping slider. A pitcher with a straight fastball may be able to successfully pair that with a good cutter. But through all of this, you also need to look at a pitcher's spin rate. If it is low, there may be an added benefit to shooting for a gyroscopic slider because that pitch will never have as much movement as someone who throws it with a higher spin rate. The slider is the most complex pitch to design, and yet one of the most effective off-speed pitches in the game today. It needs to be even more individualized to each guy's arsenal. They are all pieces of each player's puzzle, and it's up to us as coaches to decode this information and get each athlete to their best arsenal. In this video, more than the other couple pitch design videos may leave you with more questions, so don't hesitate to leave them down below. I've said this before, but this channel is for you guys. It's a two-way street of communication, and I've received tons of great ideas for videos straight from the comment section down below. Thanks for watching. If you liked today's video or you just want to support the channel, please leave a like down below. Leave a comment with any questions or suggestions for a future video, and subscribe for more weekly baseball animations posted every Wednesday.